Hello, my name is William Nost, and this is the basics of XSplit. In this video I will be showing you how to set up a basic stream using XSplit. We will go over internet speeds, the user interface, video settings and audio settings. I will also be showing you how to input sources, create scenes, and how to navigate and run a stream. As you can tell from the introduction, XSplit is used most often for gaming. However, in this video I will also show you how it can be utilized in other media forms. But first, let's take a look at where you can buy the program itself, xsplit.com. The website is full of information about the program, such as change logs and an FAQ. Right now, we're interested in the Buy Now tab. As you can see, there are three different licenses available, Free Trial, Personal, and Premium. If you are unsure about purchasing XSplit, the free trial is a good place to start. You will be able to see if the program works on your PC and also get comfortable with the functions. However, you will be restricted in four major ways. First, your stream will have an XSplit watermark on top of it. Your frames per second and resolution output, i.e. the quality of your stream, will be very low and you will only be able to navigate four scenes. A personal license is good enough for the average user, but there are some features that premium only offers. Stream delay, local network streaming, and commercial use being the major ones. For the purpose of this video, I'll be demonstrating a personal use. You also need to register to the XSplit website, which only takes a couple of minutes. All you need to do is fill out the bottom form. Let's move on to internet speeds. Streaming live footage requires a steady upload speed. I would recommend you check that your upload speed is at least 2 megabits per second. To find out, you can go to speedtest.net. All you have to do is pick an area you want to test and click it. Doing a local test will give you the highest numbers, and will usually match what you pay for. However, your speed will change if you change server. Let's see what happens if I speed test on an American server. As you can see, my ping, download rate, and more importantly, upload speed have all been cut. Before you start streaming, Make sure that the connection between your computer and the server you are streaming to is fast and stable. There's nothing worse than losing a connection halfway through your show. Alright, now let's finally take a look at XSplit itself. 
First off, we're going to look around the user interface. Starting from the top, we have New, Load, and Save Presentations. This makes it easier if you want to run more than one type of show, and it also means you don't have to fix everything manually if you decide to change PC. In the View tab, we have Video Options, Resolutions, Frame Rate, Transitions Between Scenes, and Scale Viewpoint. We'll be looking at these in more detail later on. The next tab is Broadcast. This is where you can set up and start streaming. The majority of people will be most interested in Justin or Twitch TV. However, you can stream to any server host that's available. Next to that is the Announce tab. Here you can tell people easily that you're about to go live through Twitter and Facebook. This is useful for advertising your stream and for getting more viewers. In Tools, we have Activate Delay Server, which is a premium feature. My Recordings and General Settings. If we go to the settings, it opens up with your profile. This is just information you use to register on the Expert website. In the General tab, we have a few useful functions to use. Enable Skype interaction allows you to use XSplit as your Skype camera. Hide from screen region is used when we're adding into sources, which I will cover later on as well. You also have microphone settings and where your recordings are saved. There is also the channels tab and resolutions tab again, but hotkeys is what we want to look at right now. There are a handful of useful commands which you can activate by using keyboard shortcuts, such as switching scenes and muting your sound or microphone. The white box in the bottom left is where your sources are shown for each scene. You can also change the volume or completely mute your sound and microphone to you. To the right is the scene selection. You can change the names of each scene to whatever you need to remind you. And that's the UI, very simple design and very easy to navigate. Let's look at the video settings first. Inside XSplit, go to Tools, General Settings, and then click the Resolutions tab. Here you will see a massive list of possible resolutions that XSplit can stream to, going up to 4K resolution. You can pick any of these you want to enable. Then under the View tab, you can select one of these and it will change your streaming video quality. Be sure that whatever format you are putting into XSplit, you are also streaming out at the same. Generally speaking, 720p or 1080 HD is what you want to aim for. Now the window size isn't changed by dragging the corner, and at full scale, the expert window takes up a lot of space. To change it, you need to go into View, then Scale Viewpoint. Here you can choose what percentage you want expert to preview your stream in. This will not affect your actual stream, only what you see on your desktop. Moving on to audio, expert uses your default sound input. To see this, we need to open the control panel and go to sound. Here you can see that on my PC, I have three playback devices. XSplit will stream the audio from whichever is set to default. Looking at the recording tab, we can see that I have four input devices. If we select one and click properties, then move to the listen tab, we can listen to this device. This is an easy way to test if your microphone and speakers are set correctly. If you click apply and then speak into the mic, you should hear yourself through your default playback. Make sure to turn it off before you start streaming, otherwise you will have an echo throughout the entire time. Now if we go into the general settings in XSplit again, you can change your microphone inside XSplit itself.
Now if we go to the hotkeys tab and highlight the toggle mic, we are able to assign a keyboard shortcut which will mute your microphone without having to click the button on the UI. And that's basically it for video and sound settings. Let's look at how to add sources. In the bottom left, click on add and here we can see a few options available to us. The ones I'll be demonstrating are media files, screen region and adding titles. The camera source can be used from a webcam or a virtual camera like DX Tori that I have. So to add a media file, such as a video, image or soundtrack, just click add media file, find what you want to use and double click it. And instantly it's there and already playing. To make it bigger, just move over the edge of the box, left click and drag it out. If we right click, a settings tab opens up. You can also access this by highlighting the source and clicking settings. We can pause the video, mute it, choose what time to start and end, decide if you want the clip to automatically play when the scene is changed, and decide what should happen when the clip is finished. Now if we select a new scene, you can see that the montage clip is gone. You need to add sources into each individual scene. So let's add a title this time. Very easy to do. Just type in what you want to say. Then you can make the text scroll, change the color and the font. Then just like the clip, click and drag the edges to make it fit. And to move it, just left click and drag it down. Now if I add an image to this as well, by going to the media file, we can have a pre-clip scene. Then when you are ready, just change the scene and start the show. If you look at the other source options, there are a lot available to us as default for XSplit, but there are also plugins which you might be interested in downloading yourself. You can personalize your stream to how you want it. To remove a source, there are two options. Either uncheck the source and it will disappear, or click remove. We can also change the layering of the stream. For example, if I cover the text with this image, all you need to do is highlight the source you want to move, then click the two arrows here. One final source you might be interested in using is the screen region. Once you activate it, these two red lines should appear. 
and you just need to click and drag a box over what part of your desktop you want to view. A more useful situation might be to highlight a music player. So let's change it up a little bit. I have some rehearsal footage from a production of Midsummer Night's Dream. The group used three different locations at the time to rehearse, but if you were to set up a camera in each area, you're able to stream all the rehearsals at the same time. Now would be a good time to save this presentation. All you have to do is go to File and click Save Presentation. Pick a location and give it a name. Then to load, just go to File and Load Presentation. Now if we were to make a new presentation or change computers, so long as you had the file, you can just reload it again, like so. Now let's look at changing scenes. Using the bottom right, I change the names to help me identify what is showing on each scene. And now if something interesting is happening on camera one, you can see it. Camera two, And finally, camera 3. Also remember that you can go to the general settings and hotkey keyboard shortcuts to switch scenes. So now if I move my mouse out of the way and just press Alt number pad 2 and now to camera 3 and back to 1. One final thing I want to show you before the end. A cool feature on Expert is chroma key, or green screen. All you need to do is right click a source, go to color, then check chroma key. And just like that, a green screen becomes a snowy tree line. Thank you very much for watching the basics of Xsplit. My name is William Nellist, and I hope to see your streams very soon.